Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. We've got another episode for um, our mental yeah. health series. Mm -hmm. And today we are doing it on borderline personality disorder. So we are just going to read the definition from online and then Libby will explain it her, her way. Yeah. Um, so it is called borderline personality disorder. We will be referring it to it as BPD in this video but it is also known and more commonly known now as EUPD, which is Emotionally Unstable Personality Disorder. It is a long-term pattern of abnormal behaviour characterised by unstable relationships with other people, unstable sense of self, self and unstable emotions. Disclaimer, we're not doctors. We are just doing this for educational, yeah, educational purposes. purposes. And also, this is just Libby's, Libby's story. personal story and her how the illness affects her life. So other people may have different symptoms, different ways it affects them, but this is just Libby's one, and it's just to give an insight of what it's like for someone with BPD. Hi, Hi Libby. Libby! Thanks for joining us today. Hi, thanks for having me. So we've just explained what BPD is um, from the internet, so the definition. Could you explain what BPD means to you? It's, I find it really hard to explain what um, BPD is like for me. Um, it's, it's a very cliche analogy, but I always um, describe it as like being on a roller coaster and it's like a never ending roller coaster and you get all these highs and these lows and it's almost as if you're it's like fun house and you've got these different like things being thrown at you and like like popping out and those are all the different symptoms that seem kind of random mm -hmm. if that makes sense um but yeah i would say that bpt for me is like just this roller coaster of emotions and different random symptoms that you wouldn't expect to go together but they do no, that sounds absolutely, like, understandable. Um, having said that, it's so, like, up and down, like a roller coaster. What's the biggest stigma that you've faced since being diagnosed with BPD? Um, I find that there's quite a lot of stigma around um, BPD. Um, something that happened to me about... Uh, I can't even think now. About <laughs> six months ago... Um, I went to A&E with a friend of mine because she was feeling suicidal and after she had been seen and like triaged and stuff, um, we was talking to the nurse and she said, um, I'm so glad that you're not one of these BPD people because they're so demanding and it was almost as if she was trying to say that people with personality disorders are not as well behaved as like people who have any other mental illness um which really frustrated me and I just kind of had to sit there and bite my tongue because it wasn't there for me <laughs> that that would be really hard to bite your tongue I can imagine yeah that's that's really bad of them that they just just because of it's like a different disorder like it doesn't actually mean that you're a demanding person or anything no that it doesn't make sense does it like it doesn't anyone, but just because you're wanting help doesn't mean you're a demanding person any more than someone with like suicidal thoughts or depression would it's true and also i feel like what a pe lot of people don't realize is there's actually like correct me if i'm wrong but there, there's two types of um, bpd there's mm -hmm. like the quiet type and then what's the other type like the classic type yeah, something like that. There's like subtypes, and yeah. there's also apparently, from what I've heard, um, people can show it in different ways. So people can be very so. That, for example, the quiet type, mm -hmm. like they're more inward, so they might have symptoms but not show them as outwardly as some the classic yeah. type of people with BPD. Yeah. So I think I've heard of four different types of borderline personality disorder: um, self-destructive, impulsive. Pentulin, I think is how you pronounce it, and discourage. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure what each of them like means and what each of the symptoms are for each one, but I think those are the four types of borderline. Oh, we've not heard of those before, but it'd be really interesting to um, learn more about them, wouldn't it? Yeah, we'll definitely learn more about those. So how and when were you actually diagnosed with borderline personality disorder? 
So when I was 17, um, I was sort of told that I had the symptoms of BPD, but I couldn't be diagnosed. And then I, that was in Wales. And then I moved to Bath, England. And I was diagnosed with BPD, like officially, um, when I was 19. And I found out I was diagnosed with it by um, seeing my medical records, which is not the best way to find out you're diagnosed with an illness. Um, And then I moved back to Wales and only about six months ago, I asked my psychiatrist what I was actually diagnosed with because I have a previous diagnosis from Bath. I didn't know if it had been carried over. And she said, yeah, your diagnosis is BPD. Um, So I was like told I kind of had it at 17. I found out I definitely had it when I was 19. And then it was like confirmed again when I was 22. Wow. So you actually didn't know you had borderline personality disorder till you saw it on a piece of paper. How did that make you feel? Like, I would feel so cheated. Mm -hmm. You've got an illness. You've got the right to know what it is and you've got the right to get help. I mean, how you, how are you going to get help if you see it on a piece of paper yeah, months you later? Yeah, been told by professionals what you even have. Yeah, how did you feel? And did you research yourself? Did you know about borderline personality previously? Just That's just crazy. So, yeah, I, I understand what you mean by saying you feel cheated. Um, I, I kind of felt a bit betrayed because I felt like I was being left out of the loop. Um, And because I was being treated for a different illness at the time, it kind of, it was a bit like a smack in the face, like, oh, okay, this is what I've got. It kind of really confused me. Um, But my, one of my housemates at the time, she spoke to my GP for me and was like, demanding my GP to stop on the truth and tell me what I was actually diagnosed with so that helped and then my GP sat down with me and explained it to me. So that's a bit strange that um, even though you had the symptoms at 17 you weren't actually diagnosed until you were 18 or 19 well when you found out um, is there a reason that you can't be diagnosed before the age of 18 like is there because we've heard yeah. that there is a certain... Um, There's an age, age. limit, yeah, that if yeah. you're 17, you can't be diagnosed, but you have to be over 18 to be diagnosed. Do you know, like, why that is? So, from talking to, like, different professionals that I've seen and stuff, um, it's mainly because um, of, like, hormones when you're growing up through teenage years and the fact that you're still developing and things like that. But a lot of professionals and, like, psychiatrists don't tend to like to diagnose you with uh, any type of personality disorder until you're at least 25. It's just that because sometimes they've known you for such a long period, that's why some people can be diagnosed younger than 25. Um, Because, for example, they've known you for like five, six years, so they feel like they have a grasp on what you are as a person and what you are like as your illness. So they can separate the two and they can like make a definite diagnosis of BPD before 25. Um, but yeah, so it, it all depends on things like uh, how long you've known your psychiatrist and things like that. But it, it is usually because of like hormones and the fact that you're still developing. So what are the symptoms um, of BPD and what symptoms do you personally have and struggle most with? It's with abandonment. Uh, unstable emotions, risky or impulsive behaviour, um, disassociative and psychotic symptoms when stressed, um, self harm and suicidal behaviour or thoughts, um, an inability to control anger, and I can't think of any others mainly because those are the ones that I struggle with. So I can't think of the other... There's either two or three more. I can't think of them. Um, But those are the main ones that I struggle with. Um, And I find, like, a lot of the time, I sit and I think, I don't think I have BPD. I feel like I've been misdiagnosed. And then I'll have an episode of extreme fear of abandonment or something. And then I sit and I think... Maybe I do have BPD. (laughs) 
Um, but yeah, I, I struggle a lot with abandonment. That's one of my main ones and inability to control anger. Um, and it's not just like anger. I feel it's like a flash of red rage and it's like, you can feel it through your whole body and like in your veins and it's, it's really hard to control. Um, but yeah, those are kind of the symptoms that I struggle with. That is such a range of different symptoms. I mean, mm. from one end, it's fear of abandonment, and then the other, rage. So yeah, there's um, so many different symptoms in one illness. Illness is so true. So how do your family and friends or partner, how do those close to you deal with all those different symptoms? I mean, I know they don't happen all at once, but how do they deal with those symptoms? Um, it's it's quite hard for the people around me to cope with it. Um, I guess we kind of just take it step by step and day by day. Um, my mum is always trying to sort of be there for me and support me, but I'm a very classic BPD in the terms of I hate you, don't leave me. Um, so anytime someone tries to get close to me and anytime someone tries to support me, I lash out at them and I try and push them away. But then the moment they leave, I cry because they've left me. Um, so it's quite hard for those around me to support me because I kind of don't let them. Um, which I think I find a lot of people with BPD have told me they also struggle with so one of the symptoms is impulsive behaviour and or reckless behaviour and this can be things like binge eating, overspending, um, drinking excessive amounts of alcohol and taking drugs. And I find that when it comes to support, I get a lot of support with a lot of symptoms, but I tend to get more anger when it comes to things like taking drugs and using alcohol to the excess. Um which I find kind of adds to the stigma a bit because it you're not you can't really support one part of the illness and not the other. You kind of have to support the whole illness, if you know what I mean. Do you think that BPD has become overdiagnosed recently? Um, and it seems to, as I've what well, from like our perception, it seems to have become sort of a trend. Like a lot of psychiatrists and a lot of people kind of diagnose it more or yeah. want to be diagnosed with BPD which is quite unusual because why would you want to have an yeah. illness that's obviously very very life-changing and life affecting I feel like five years ago I don't think I even heard of BPD yeah and now it's like and now most people have it most people have it or you saying know. that they're showing symptoms of it I do feel like these days it's become very overdiagnosed. um when I first went to DBT when I was 17, everyone in the room were like, it was the first time they'd ever heard of anyone else having the illness. And now it's almost as if everyone has it. Um, and I feel like it's mainly because, um, like, I find if you self-harm or you have engaged in suicidal behaviours, you sort of almost automatically get diagnosed with BPD now. Whereas before, it would take years and years and years to get the diagnosis. I know some people that are like 50 that I've met through group therapy and they waited 20 years to get their diagnosis. And now some people only wait like three months. Um, I feel like it's being diagnosed too quickly to be able to actually tell whether it is or not. And I've also noticed that quite a few people in the mental health community have recently had their diagnosis changed because they no longer fit the criteria. Um, so I feel like that's kind of an example of how it could be that the diagnosis was wrong to begin with, possibly. So there's quite a lot of pros and cons to that, really. So if it's good in one hand that if you have the illness, um, you're being diagnosed earlier, and that means you can therefore get the help earlier. But then, like that woman that you just mentioned about... Um, it took 20 years for her to get diagnosed. Obviously, if she was diagnosed earlier, then it would have been much better for her. But if people are diagnosing it too quickly and then they're being labelled as having this illness, 
it can sometimes become a sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like if you then reset, so say they only have one or two symptoms mm. and then they re then research what borderline personality disorder is and they see all these other symptoms, they might think, oh, well, if I have this illness, then maybe these, like they kind of like become the illness Completely rather than yeah. actually have the illness to begin with, if that makes sense. Completely makes sense. Yeah. And it also it's quite bad that like, People might feel like they have to have the illness to be sick enough or to, like, to feel validated. Relate, yeah, to yeah. Like validated if they see so many other people having it. I feel like that can be a lot with self harm as well. Yeah. Like a lot of people think that you have to self harm to have borderline personality, mm -hmm. but that's not true. No, I that's mean, it's just one symptom of eight. Yeah. yeah. So you can have seven symptoms, and the one symptom you don't have is the self harming. But you can still have borderline personality disorder. Yeah, that's true. And I feel like that is actually a really big stigma. So when did you start to notice symptoms arise? Like, was there a specific moment where you thought, wait, this isn't normal, or this doesn't seem right? Or was it just... Over time. Over time. So there wasn't a... There, there was a specific moment, but I didn't re realise that that was the specific moment until years later, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So um, I started to realise that I kind of wasn't um, like mentally well when I was around 15. Um, and that was, I went, I was with CAMS when I was 14. And it was kind of about a few months after I started to work with them that I kind of realised I wasn't mentally well um but it then took quite a long time to realize that I actually needed help um I, I kind of was in denial that okay I might not be healthy but that doesn't mean that I need help if that makes sense mm -hmm. but looking back it was when I was 12 that things really started to kind of go downhill um but it, I just didn't realize it at that time could you explain uh, what it's like in a typical day for you as with someone with BPD? So a typical day for me, um, I kind of, I spend a lot of my time sort of just inside my head. So I'll have like the TV on or I'll try, I'll have like music playing, but action to it, I'm very inside my head and caught up with my thoughts. Um, and I find it very hard to escape those thoughts. Um, I'm very caught up a lot of the time with sort of suicidal thoughts and thoughts of self-harm. Um, I also get quite bad intrusive thoughts. Um, and then I, I find I'm very, um, emotionally reactive. So... I'm kind of, my baseline mood, I would say on a scale of one to 10 is like a four. And that's kind of just a flat mood. I'm kind of, I'm not good, I'm not bad. I'm just sort of flat. But then if something happens and it can be the smallest thing, like accidentally spilling my biscuit into my cup of tea um, and it all just set me off and I'll either cry or I will get really angry or I'll just kind of laugh hysterically and, and become like too too happy over something um so it all depends what happens in my day to say what kind of my typical day is like but my moods are very up and down um my mood like it just doesn't stay the same throughout a day it's very up and down and it's all dependent on what happens during the day so whether I get good news get bad news something bad happens, things like that. So we've heard that um, people with BPD sometimes get misdiagnosed with bipolar. Have you ever experienced this or have you ever had any misdiagnoses? So I, I haven't been um, misdiagnosed as such, but before I got my official BPD diagnosis, I was being treated for psychosis. Um, they believed that I had a psychotic disorder. Um, because I was getting a lot of hallucinations and delusions. Um, and this was kind of brought on by my drug use, but also by stress. So it was kind of a combination of those two things that brought on 
the psychotic symptoms. Um, but because it didn't last very long, um, it lasted like a few months and then it kind of faded away and I got less and less and less of them. Um, they And because of all the other symptoms I displayed as well, they diagnosed me with BPD instead. So it was kind of not necessarily a misdiagnosis, but I was being treated for something else and then they diagnosed me with BPD. Thank you so much for your time today, Libby. Like, it was amazing talking to you. And yeah, and thank you for giving us so much information and insight into the illness. And keep being you because you're amazing. Yes. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for having me. It's been lovely speaking to you. Bye.